welcome to Buckman's Model Mania. Today I'm doing a voiceover because <laughs> when I recorded this video, I didn't double check to make sure the mic was working. So we're vo doing a voiceover for Moomin Stage um, 45. First thing I'm, you know, like normal, I opened the book. But the first thing I did was I showed the chair from, I believe it was Stage 44. It is now painted, and I actually use the same color as I did on the uh, Eagle One. It's heirloom antique or something like that, rattle can paint, but I was pretty impressed with it. So here we've got the parts, and I'm getting the parts out, and what we've got is it, it's all the parts for the, uh, or it's more parts for the front veranda more railing parts, and then there is the backrest and backrest details for the chair, the next chair. So it's been a few days since I did this video, so I'm just going to watch <laughs> and talk about it as we go along. And those parts I just pulled out are all for the chair, for the second chair. I believe, believe it's the rocking chair is going to be identical to the first one. We got the two railings and then we've got these corner posts all of this is very similar to stage 24 I believe it was that I did the railing it's it's like I said it has been a few days since I did this so let's go ahead and I'm gonna sit back I'm gonna be quiet I'm gonna let Buck build and I'm going to make comments as we go along. I'm using my little tins to make sure that I have the uh, all the parts caught where they're not going to go, not going to go anywhere. Showing the little posts, there are three of them, and two of them have uh, markings on all four sides. One has markings on only, I believe it is three sides. And I'm making sure that they're all the same as the first set were, make so that the detail pieces that I'm about to cut loose are all going to be about the same as they are for the uh, other railing. By the way, you can see in the little tin there, I still have more of the really small dowel from stage 24. I I hold on to scrap pieces so that when I am building later on, I use the scrap first. If I don't need it, I eventually will throw it away, but you never know when you might need something like that. The, um, the wooden strip that I cut these detail pieces off, I don't save that. I throw it away because I don't need it. It's, you know, it's, it's just scrap. I don't have anything that I'm going to need it for. So now I believe I went back and sanded all of these. Got out the glue with the really small tip on it. I'm comparing the uh, posts to make sure that I have them oriented the same way because there is a slight difference between the uh, top and bottom on these. I don't think it would make that big a difference, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. And since there, there is a guiding mark on there, but... I, I mess with these quite a bit to get them lined up. To my eye, I want them straight. And then you'll see here where I'm doing the uh, detail parts on the front. I'm going around from one, you know, front to back, doing um, sides next to each other. 
I believe as I go further in, I stop doing that and I do them across from each other just so that I can hold the piece by the uh, sides there. And, uh, you know, kind of keep them uh, pressed together. You'll see I did just put that one down because what I'm doing is letting those two set up a little bit. And I use, I'm using a, a white glue. I need to get some, uh, some yellow wood glue, except for the fact that I've, I've been working on some wooden projects with yellow, the wood glue. And the problem with the yellow wood glue is it leaves a yellow residue if it's outside of the uh, glued area. And especially on like this white, that would show really, really badly. So I've got the second one going on there. Set that one down. And we'll go back to the, and do the third one. And this is, this was actually before I did a took a complete day off and just cleaned the shop. The shop is much cleaner than it has been in a while. It's one of these things. Uh, I get to building. I don't put things away. I leave them out because the, I leave them handy. And then the shop ends up being a complete and total disaster area. And I don't feel like building anything because of that. But I have been getting back into wooden models a little bit. So because of that, I'm kind of getting my mojo back. I've, I kind of lost it on part works over the last year or so, just because of all the shipping problems. So I'm moving away from part works. I'm moving back towards wooden models. The Moomin House and the Alien and the uh, Disney Doll House are going to be exceptions because I have enough parts to keep going on them. For you know, I the Alien and the Disney Doll House, I have the full. Um, the full build. I just need to put it together. Also, at the time I did this video, I did not have the uh, Eiffel Tower from IXO, so that will be coming to the channel here soon. It'll go into the lineup, and uh, hopefully it'll go together well. So we're going to continue on with these on I think actually when I I'm, let's see I can't see through my hands how many slats I've got left but I think yeah I, I just did the uh, first one is completely done and one of the reasons I one of the things I did when I started doing the um, opposite sides I think I did that on this um, I don't know for sure. I don't remember for sure, but I started doing opposite sides so that when I sat it down, it wouldn't be sitting on the side that has a uh, detail piece on it. So I'm going to be quiet for a few seconds and continue to let Buck build. Well, I do have to say, I really hate dead airspace in my videos. And the way I'm doing this, I don't have a way to, I, I need to figure out a way to do these voiceovers if I have to do them so that I can Fast forward the video a little bit. Right now, I'm actually, it's running in OBS and recording from OBS at the same time. So I kind of am stuck with how fast the video goes. Lots of little blue spots on.
I was just looking at the instructions for issue 26 because I had the same problem with stage 26. And what, what happens is I'll sit down and I'll start doing videos. I, and it was kind of funny what happened here because I did a bunch of videos. Everything was great. I went, did something, and Logitech updated the software. The software for my mic updated. And every time that happens, my microphone quits working. So I have to watch on OBS to make sure that it is recording. I may find a better program. I don't think so, not for free. OBS is a great program for, you know, for doing these free um, videos. But sometimes it has its quirks. You'll see there I have the little ruler I'm measuring and about to cut the, I think it's six posts on here, something like that. Six posts to, for the railing. And they, those are going to go down into the floor and stick up through the top of the rail. Holds the railing it holds the railing in place and it'll hold the pillars that I get in the next issue. Ah, lost one of the little scraps. I'm using my chisel blade, which reminds me, I've, I noticed here recently, my chisel blade needs to be replaced. Matter of fact, you'll see Later on, I think I actually did it on, I don't remember if I did it on a live stream or if it was a video, but I bent the blade. Continuing to use that same blade. Right now, I'm, I'm not watching video because I'm getting out a replacement number 17 blade and replacing it in my X-Acto knife. Okay, so now I'm, I'm putting a drop of glue into the top of the pillar so that when I put the... the uh, dowel in, it'll actually glue it down inside of the pillar. And I'll do that on all of them. And all it is is just a little drop of glue. And I think I just pointed out that those ones stick out through the top. And I'm if I'm not mistaken, I actually did this different from the, what the instructions said. I don't remember. But what I tend to do is I, I look at the instructions and I will um, determine how I think it would best work. So there's two of them. Here we're going to do the third one. Now I'm going to put the posts in. And there's a, there's a definite upside and a downside. I believe the square, more squared off edge is the down the bottom side. And unlike the first railing, I believe I because these will friction fit. I want to say what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put them all in and not use any glue on the. Uh, I think they're called banisters. I'm not I'm not going to glue them because they're going to stay in without any problem. Yeah, it is there are they the pieces in the book the pieces are called banisters. And so you'll see I'm just sticking them on there that it's working well.
Okay, so I have all the banisters in place. I'm going to apply some glue around the hole there, around the spots where the posts go. Um, as well as putting some glue. Okay, I did apply glue. I didn't, didn't remember if I had or not. So I'm applying glue just across the bottoms of these. It's twofold. What it's going to do is it's going to keep the banisters in place. And it's also going to glue it down to the top of the uh, veranda. This is where it gets interesting because kind of on the fly here. We got the post down through there. Now we're going to put the post into the hole and the railing is able to sit there and move back and forth right now. I'm trying to keep it from getting down, going all the way down while I do this so that I don't end up with glue all over the veranda floor. Actually, I think I got that in there. It looks like I got that in there the first time right off the bat. Get this one in here. Line it up, play with it a little bit. Push it down, get all of these pushed down. And the next thing I got to do is put that top rail up. Before I do that, I'm going to put some glue on the posts. Then I'm going to take the rail and set it on top. And you can see the tops of the posts, and it does say to paint over it with white paint. Or not the tops of the posts, the tops of the banisters. It says to paint over it with white paint. I think it looks fine the way it is. I'm not going to sit there, because if I try and paint over it, I'm going to not, probably not be able to match the paint exactly. You're going to still see them. And I'm going to sit, sit there and have to go back and forth and end up painting this thing for the next three weeks to get it close to matching. And you'll see what I'm doing right now there is I am moving the banisters around, getting them lined up with the holes. I think that, I think I got them all in there because you, you're trying to get about a dozen parts in place at the same time. So I see the hammer over there on the left hand side. I don't remember. I, I do remember I did use the hammer at one point on these railings to get it to seat and look good, look good, get them all the way down. I don't remember if I did it on this side or not. And you can see there are some, the pins are sticking up through the top. That's where the posts that hold this roof up are going to go. There we've got the first chair done. That is all the work that is done on the um, veranda. So now we're going to move on to the chair, this the second chair that's out there on the veranda. You know, the one is a, the first one was a rocking chair. This is just a straight chair and actually it, I, actually really like the way they can have you construct this. You see, um, because of the, uh, they were joined and I had to cut them apart. I always sand that little nub off trying to make it look, well, I, I sand it off not to look for it to look right. I sand it off to where it would feel right because if it feels smooth, then it's usually, um, it's usually going to be look smooth. Plus, we're going to put paint up on top of this, so it will look pretty good when done, which that, that actually happens in stage 26. We just put some minor pieces together on this in this stage. Because, you know, because that's all we got. Just looking. I'm 
looking in the instructions right now because I see. Okay, I was I was looking at this going. Wait, I see more parts than what I think is going together, but you know, it, it all works out. So we're going to cut the uh, the backrest details A and B part. A being the uh, larger piece, B being the smaller piece, and then we're going to glue them together so that they match up, giving a really nice effect. Um, a, it looks like it was routed, basically. Kind of a nice chair. And I'm sanding off the little nubs like I like I do. It is it is nice that they yeah and and there's the two pieces the way they go together. It is nice that they did some paint on these pieces, but I think straight wood would have made it easier to. Because the white paint, the white area on these pieces, the paint doesn't stick that well to me. That's why most of the time, instead of using an acrylic paint, you know, craft paint, instead of doing that, I use rattle can paint simply because it sticks right away to the, the uh, white areas. White areas is like, I'm not sure whether it's paint or some sort of coating, but it does not like paint. It doesn't stick right away, especially with craft paint. And there I am out of the camera again. So there we've got one of the detail pieces, one of the back pieces together. We're gonna put the other back piece on there, and the, or the two halves together. And now we've got, what we're going to have to do is take those three pieces, the stretcher and the two backrest pieces or back backrest details. And we're going to have to put them onto the legs of the chairs. So you see, I'm putting a little drop of glue in there. This was a little bit interesting to get together because it kind of has no way. You really can't make sure it's really square other than eyeballing it. And the glue does not set really extremely fast. And so it can very easily shift. And I think if I remember right, it actually does shift a little bit. And it doesn't really line up well until I get the stretcher in. Put them together there. I think, if I remember right, at one point it falls apart. Maybe not. Maybe I did get it to go together right the first time. I just saw it. I'm, I'm certain they're messing with it because I can. I saw it in the camera here a little bit. I've also saw it. I, so I saw it when I was building it that it was not they were the legs were not parallel so i had to mess with it to get it straight and you can see the stretcher is going to go down there at the bottom let's see 23 minutes or 25 minutes now out of a 28 minute video so i think maybe this does go together without any I seem to remember having issues with this. I'm watching. I, I'm watching just like you guys are. I want to see what happens. Because it's been a couple of weeks since I did this video. Where'd I go? 
Ah, okay, so the stretcher was not playing nice, so I clamped it. Actually, okay, I see now, I remember, I put clamps on all four of the parts. And it, that, yeah, the top, um, the right side back kept coming apart as well. Like I said, I, I remember having some small issues with this, but I have hundreds of clamps. And so when it comes to just clamping something together like that, piece of cake. Clamping the other side. And then this, I believe, is where we leave it so that it can dry. Set that down there. And I'll start the outro, which I will tell you that's all that there is to do in this stage. Hope you're enjoying this set, set of videos. If you are, if you enjoy this content, like, subscribe, and hit the bell icon. Um, bell icon, subscribe, leave a comment. I love comments, especially when somebody makes a comment three weeks after I post a video or made a video. And I don't remember what I said, so I actually have to go back and look see what I said in there. With that, I'm going to let this play out. As I said, like, subscribe, hit the bell icon. Come on over to Hobby Town Modelers on Facebook, YouTube, and Discord. See what we're doing. We do streams on Friday, Sunday, and Wednesday. There's a Falcon, uh, Perfect Grade Falcon build. Take care of yourselves. Take care of each other. Have a great day. Have a great day tomorrow, and we'll see you in the next video.